As youngsters, we would know the gospel before we knew anything about hip-hop. Before Kirk Franklin, gospel music was more associated with tradition and some would say boring. And Kirk found that many people in the gospel community saw it as outdated and unappealing to a younger audience. Despite the resistance he faced, Franklin was determined to modernize the genre and bring it to a new level of popularity. He drew inspiration from the R&B, hip-hop and contemporary gospel music he grew up listening to and began incorporating these elements into his own music, which helped to attract a wider audience and appeal to a younger generation. This bold move was met with a lot of criticism and resistance from the gospel community, who saw Franklin's new sound as a deviation from the traditional gospel style. But Franklin persevered, driven by his faith and his desire to connect with the new generation of gospel music fans. He was relentless in his pursuit of innovation and pushed the boundaries of what was possible in gospel music. This is a story of Kirk Franklin, a living gospel legend. It's always challenging to become a legend without struggle. The same goes for Kirk Franklin. He has been a hard-working man since childhood. Franklin was raised by his aunt Gertrude in Fort Worth after being abandoned by his mother and never knowing his father. Gertrude was a devout woman who upheld a strict Baptist home. When he was four, his aunt collected aluminum cans to pay for his piano tuition. At age seven, Franklin's aunt politely declined his first contract offer because he was a natural musician musician who could play by ear and sight read equally well. At 11, he was in charge of the adult choir at the Dallas area Mount Rose Baptist Church. After a time of adolescent rebellion, during which a close friend of his was unintentionally shot and murdered, Franklin returned to the church and started taking music classes at Oscar Dean Wyatt High School with Jewel Kelly and the Singing Chaparrals. He also founded the gospel group Humble Hearts during this time, and it was thanks to their recording of one of the original songs that Milton Bingham became aware of him. Milton then allowed him to conduct Dallas Fort Worth Mass Choir at the prestigious Gospel Music Workshop of America Convention in 1990. From there, his career as a gospel musician started. Make sure you watch till the end of the video as we have some interesting facts coming up about Kirk Franklin's gospel music. What is his famous gospel music? You must have heard of Kirk's music once in your lifetime. Franklin established The Family, a 17-person choir made up of pals from his younger years in 1992. The group made its debut in 1993 with the iconic Kirk Franklin and The Family album after joining the budding gospel-centric label. The album held the number one spot on Billboard's gospel chart for a remarkable 42 weeks before moving on to the R&B and pop charts and ultimately becoming platinum. Although Kirk Franklin Franklin and the Family Christmas debuted two years later, Franklin's 1996 album, Whatcha Lookin' For, cemented his stardom. Whatcha Lookin' For, a significant crossover gospel hit that peaked at number 23 on the Billboard 200, brought him his first Grammy Award for Best Contemporary Soul Gospel Album. Franklin worked with the Dallas-based choir God's Property the following year on the album God's Property from Kirk Franklin's New Nation, which was even more successful and won a Grammy for Best Gospel Choir or Chorus Album. The album also topped the gospel and R&B charts and peaked at number three on the pop chart. The ambitious 1998 album, The New Nation Project, featured the family, God's Property, and a brand new choir under the direction of Aretha Franklin called One Nation Crew. Also, prominent non-secular performers, including Mary J. Blythe, R. Kelly and Bono participated. As a result, Franklin won another prize for Best Contemporary Soul Gospel Album. Additionally, it would turn out to be his last record with the family. How hip-hop became a more spiritual place thanks to Kirk Franklin. Before Kirk Franklin, hip-hop was considered the devil, but Kirk Franklin made it a spiritual and relaxing place for music lovers. Chance's Coloring Book and Kanye's The Life of Pablo benefited from this groundbreaking fusion of religious lyrics and secular music. Franklin was in excellent company when it came to creating Christian music with a secular aesthetic. Even though his acceptance of hip-hop was a huge milestone for his time, he stood on the shoulders of legendary gospel figures who had also abandoned tradition. Singer Tremaine Hawkins received criticism for synth-pop songs like Fall Down, Spirit of Love, 
which sounds like it may have been Whitney Houston's in the 1980s after trading in her robes for a more fashionable appearance. Nevertheless, the song reached the top of the hot dance and disco charts, making it one of the earliest gospel crossover songs in contemporary music. Therefore, it seems that, over time, Franklin and his impact were able to break free from the limitations of the gospel and enter unanticipated spheres of pop culture. After all, the genre has existed and endured for a long time in black culture. Martin said, In African American culture, we all have roots in the church, whether it's going to your grandmother's house and she's playing gospel music or you have to go to church. Snoop Dogg recently shared a video of him singing Franklin's Silver and Gold, so there is a root within each of us. Gospel music is present in everyone's lives, even atheists. Is the Kirk Franklin threat to his son true? A parent can be harsh with their children sometimes, but that doesn't mean they don't love them. Kirk Franklin was a Twitter top trending news topic when his son leaked audio. When Kirk Franklin's estranged son released audio of his father criticizing him in a foul-mouthed phone call that concluded with his father yelling, I will break your neck, a tense family argument was thrown into the spotlight. Never treat me disrespectfully. The 51-year-old Elder Franklin is a well-known and significant personality in gospel music. He is often regarded as introducing the modern gospel to the general public. Later that evening, he wrote an apology to his supporters on social media, which drew even more attention to the heated father-son argument and sparked divisive responses. The fans were shocked to see such remarks from Franklin to his son. Kerryon Franklin, 32, shared a video of the interaction on Instagram on Saturday, along with the remark, I don't feel comfortable around my dad. He wrote, I don't think I'll ever trust my father to be alone around him. However, for his justification, Franklin apologized to his fans and told them how he felt disrespected when his son disrespected him. Although parents' love can never be harsh towards their children, it is important for them to know that tough love is necessary to survive in the hostile world. Franklin's unique approach to gospel music has not only influenced other gospel artists, but it has also helped to broaden the appeal of gospel music and bring it to a wider audience. He has been able to bridge the gap between traditional gospel and contemporary music by incorporating elements of R&B, hip-hop and other popular music styles into his songs. This has helped to make gospel music more relatable and accessible to a younger generation. One of the hallmarks of Franklin's music is the way he blends spiritual messages with catchy and upbeat melodies. His songs are not only uplifting and inspirational, but they are also musically engaging and have mass appeal. The combination of powerful messages and entertaining music has helped to make his music a hit with both gospel fans and non-gospel fans alike. In addition to his musical contributions, Franklin is also known for his philanthropic work and his commitment to giving back to the community. He has established several charitable organizations, including the Kirk Franklin Family Life Center, which provides education and resources to help families in need. He also uses his platform to raise awareness about social issues and advocate for change. That's all for today, guys. Consider clicking the like button and subscribing to this channel. Make sure you hit the notification bell so that you never miss out on any news 